Canon's 2022 camera sales are forecasted to increase 10% over last year despite numerous challenges. Canon also said that the first quarter went almost according to plan. Details are coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications. So that way you're kept informed on the latest camera gear news and rumors. Canon stated that in their current quarter, they were able to supply products almost as planned, and sales increased 4.4% year on year to 879.4 billion yen, increasing sales for the fifth consecutive quarter and maintaining momentum for expanding business results. Well, that's obviously good. Uh, despite all the challenges in the market that Canon was able to increase sales to increase their business and performance, operating income, all that stuff is really, really good news. But there's one little caveat in there I wanted to talk about. The first quarter, the first quarter of 2022 went almost according to plan. Well, I think that's what we're talking about, the Canon EOS R7 that was due to be announced in March, but now is getting delayed into the fourth quarter of 2022. So sometime around December, November or October. Demand continues to be strong and the market size is expected to increase by 5% to 5.65 million units in 2022, with an addition of carryover from previous years due to supply shortages. This is good news. Canon's predicting that the market is supposed to increase by about 5% to about 5.7 million units. This is significantly down from where we were back in 2011 with something like 20 million units. And the market has just completely just collapsed due to the competition from smartphones. And for a lot of people, smartphones work. But what's really interesting about Canon's forecast is it lines up with what SEPA is saying is that we're starting to pull out of this malaise and we're starting to increase the market size. And that's a good thing. So 5.7 million or 5.65 million units, it's still low from its high back in 2011, but still it's definitely an improvement. In the first quarter, sales of interchangeable lens cameras fell below previous years due to the lack of supply, but as a result of prioritizing the supply of high-end models like the Canon EOS R5 and the R6, the average selling price rose and RF sales of lenses also increased due to a significant increase in sales. But this really isn't a surprise what Canon's saying right here. Canon is saying that they're prioritizing cameras like the R5 and the R6, other high-end units, because, well, for each unit, they're able to get more money out of it. Because of the market conditions, they're only able to produce a certain amount of any given unit, of any given camera, of any lens, or any other accessory. So if they're going to do that, why not pick the products that generate the most cash per unit? The R5, for example, it might have the same margin as a Canon 90D or a Rebel, or an SL2, an SL3. However, they're gonna get so much more revenue from that, so why not focus on the R5 and the R6? The 1200 millimeter, the 800 millimeter F5.6, it certainly makes a lot of sense from their bottom line. Sadly though, for a lot of us who can't afford the R5, the R6, or a $17,000 lens, this leaves us going, well, okay, when are we gonna get some new gear? When are we gonna get a refresh to the Canon 90D? Should I go out and buy now? What about the T8i? What about an SL2 or an SL3? What Canon is saying in their year-end financials or their, their financial statements for 2021 ending December 2021 is that they're focusing on the high-end units, the high-end lenses, and that's unlikely to change here in 2022. Sales will increase, revenue will increase, and profits will increase, but they're working with a challenging environment. And I personally have stated this many times, looking at the marketplace, looking at chip production, with fabs and foundries coming online probably sometime in 2023, 2024. They've got to work out the kinks in those places before they can get fully up to stream. And once they've done that, then they've got to clear out that backlog. Cars, computers, cameras, alarm clocks, smartphones, they're all suffering the same thing. So we have those supply shortages. Plus now we have a lot of Chinese cities that are in shutdown. We just keep getting more and more things that are slowing things down. So I don't think things are going to return back to normal production wise until 2025. So we're going to have to get used to this. So what does that mean for those of you looking for entry level or mid-level cameras? I still think they're going to come out, but I don't think they're going to get the prioritization. I think what camera companies are going to start to do is trim the number of offerings that they have right now, focus on the high end, focus on full frame, focus on cinema cameras. But I do think we are going to see cameras like the Canon EOS RP refresh. I do think that we're going to get a camera that sits between the EOS RP and the R6. As some of you have pointed out correctly, we got the EOS R in 2018, October, and in 2019, in January, we got the EOS RP announced. And these cameras weren't seen as great, exciting cameras for the time, but what they were seen as is Canon's entry into the full-frame mirrorless market, a serious entry, 
But those cameras haven't aged well. We do need a refresh of them. We need entry level cameras. What's happening with the EFM mount? We don't really know. The M50 Mark II, uh, yeah, that was largely panned. It, what we got in that camera update could easily have been provided in a firmer update. So not a big deal. We don't, we're not getting any new units for the EFM mount. Canon stopped development on DSLR, so that means no more successor to the 90D in a DSLR. So what, what's happening? Is the M6 Mark II supposed to be the transition over to the mirrorless? Are we supposed to look at that? Or what about an APS-C mount, or not an APS-C mount, an APS-C sensor on the RF mount? We've heard lots about this. The Canon R7, the EOS R7, that is the name of a camera that's supposed to be announced in the fourth quarter. And according to Canon rumors, Craig really believes that this is going to be an APS-C camera. So is Canon moving APS-C over to the R system, have one mount to rule them all like Sony's E mount? Or are they still gonna continue with the EFM mount? And this is a problem for anybody looking at buying an entry level or mid-level Canon camera. There's too many questions. There's no direction. There's no vision that's being given to us. No essence of what their strategy is to have people wait around. So then people start to look at Sony because Sony has a whole lot more offerings on APS-C and full frame from various different price points. And I gotta be honest with you, what I'm seeing with Canon right now, I, I don't know if I was in your spot looking at something like a 90D, whether I'd wanna stick around with what I'm hearing. I need more, I need to see more. And Canon, if you're listening, maybe toss us out some sort of development announcement of what you've got planned. We understand that you're dealing with a very, very tough market as everybody is. But to give us an idea of what you've got planned, if you've got something planned for the fourth quarter, like an R7, let us know And what's happening with the EFM mount. We consumers, by and large, we look for information. We like specifications. We like capabilities. We like to do some research. And if you're not giving us much, if you're not leaking stuff out, if you're not providing us with development announcements, and we see Sony with a whole lot more cameras at a given price point, well, that's where the market tends to go. And it's one of the reasons why Sony has gone from 0% market share many, many years ago, entering the market. And by many measures, they're in second place alone or tied with Nikon for around 20 to 22%. And they didn't get there because they didn't release. They released and they released a lot. Full frame APS-C on a singular mount. We will continue to expand the lineup of main units or cameras and interchangeable lenses this year. We will continue to pursue an increase in the value of the R system for main unit lenses and solidify our position as a top manufacturer in mirrorless cameras. There's three things I wanna unpack about this statement here. One is, we're getting more stuff this year. Main units, which is camera bodies and lenses, and that's a good thing. So at the very least, we should get the EOS R7 announcement and most likely a refresh to the EOS RP. Outside of that, I don't know. We were expecting a couple of 8K cinema cameras and a 4K camera, but who knows? So we are getting more units, we are getting more lenses, but the other thing, they wanna increase the value of the R system. Now that can be read in many ways, and what I think, what I'm afraid of, is that with everything going on, with the inflation rate being around five to 7% here in North America, I think what we can see is by increasing values by raising prices. We've already seen prices go up for simple lenses like the 24 to 105 going up $100, and many other camera units and lenses, and Canon's not the only one, many are doing this, and they have to with a, Inflation rate of 5 to 7%, they really don't have any choice. And not only that, but they're not shipping as many units as they would have otherwise. And the last thing I want to bring up is the last part of that statement. Let me read it to you again because it's very, very bold. And solidify our position as a top manufacturer in mirrorless cameras. As top manufacturer. Right now, Sony, by all measures, is the number one when it comes to mirrorless cameras. But Canon wants that back. They want to be the top camera company for DSLRs, mirrorless, everything. And if you look at worldwide sales, units shipped, if you look at their market share, they are number one by a huge margin. It's somewhere around 48%. Again, that's for all cameras, it's ILCs, DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, they are number one, but when it comes to mirrorless cameras, Sony is number one, but Canon is catching up. The R5 and the R6 have really, really helped. I don't suspect that the R3 will do too much, but we need that EOS RP, we need the R7, and of course, Canon hasn't answered the Sony Alpha 1 or the recent Nikon Z9. Can you believe it's been six months in the since the Nikon Z9 was announced? And where's Canon's EOS R1? Not even a whiff of a rumor, nothing significant. All we can do if we want to have an idea of what the R1 is going to be like, look at the Sony Alpha 1, look at the Nikon Z9, because we know it has to compete with those. And considering that Canon's had more time, 
I would suspect that they would be better. It should be more better than the Alpha 1 because it would have had more time over the Alpha 1 than it would have over the Z9. And that's just how things work. If you're in a really good, a rapid, innovating, competitive environment where it's all agile based, the company that comes out with the latest product should be the best. Doesn't always work out. And certainly, if we look over the history of Canon, Nikon, and Sony, it certainly hasn't been the case, but it looks to be a very, very exciting time. I know things are a little bit slow, but do me a favor, go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. So that way, as soon as I release a video, as soon as I come with an update on the RP, the R7, I can guarantee you I'll have a video out. So to save you from checking the news stories, the rumor sites every single day, just subscribe, choose all notifications, and as soon as I publish a video, you'll be in the know. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.